this all the question. Then what does President Cruz do with the illegal immigrants, the illegal aliens that are in America? You've secured the border, you've rescinded the executive amnesties, you've, stream, you've streamlined the, the illegal immigration process. With Ted Cruz being in favor of deporting them, what would you do with the illegals currently in America? I think we follow the law. Oh, yes. 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 Which means we do not illegally grant amnesty the way Barack Obama has tried to do. Right. You know, if you look at the immigration issue in history, in 1986 was the last time Congress passed immigration. At the time, there were three million people living here in Italy. And Congress told the American people, said, we got a deal. We're going to grant amnesty to these three million people. And in exchange, we're going to secure the borders and solve the problem so we don't have any more illegal immigration. And in 1986, the American people, by and large, said, OK, we accept the terms of that trade. But we all know what happened. The amnesty happened, and the border never got secured. And now, fast forward a couple of decades, instead of 3 million people, it's 11 to 12 million people here illegally. And Congress, the Democrats, the Gang of Age, have come to the American people, and, and wonder of wonders is the same thing. They say we'll grant amnesty to the people who are here illegally, and in exchange we'll secure the borders. And the American people said, "Listen, fool me once, shame on you; fool me twice, shame on you." In my view, you don't have to solve every single aspect of the immigration question all at once. The way we should approach this is focus on areas of bipartisan common ground, secure the borders, improve legal immigration, rescind amnesty, and enforce the law. Now, if we fast forward a few years, and the American people see that we've actually succeeded in securing the border. Not talking about it, not giving speeches, but we've actually fixed the problem. I think that's the point at which we can have a debate for whatever number of people remain in the country illegally. There will still be some, even with enforcement efforts, there will be some. I think that's the time to have that debate. First, demonstrate we can secure the border, then let's talk about what to do next after we demonstrated that for Rushing to give this president 
Fast Track and Trade Promotion Authority. In the context of 25 years of NAFTA, GAAP, World Trade Organization, where we've had free trade deal after free trade deal that has cost us jobs, that has seen uh, 55,000 factories go uh, abroad, that has seen wages be decimated. Senator Cruz, do you support Trade Promotion Authority? Do you support the TPP? And if so, why? It's a great question. I'm glad to have an opportunity to address it. Because it's a question of which the media and the internet has a lot of misinformation. So, so let's talk a little bit about what these two agreements provide. Because there's TPA and TPP that are two different things. TPA is Trade Promotion Authority. It's also called Fast Track. TPP is one specific trade deal in the Pacific that, that was not voted on by Congress. The one that was voted on was TPA Trade Promotion Authority. Now, I supported TPA. And the reason I supported Trade Promotion Authority is that I support free trade. When I campaigned for the Senate, I campaigned in support of free trade. I told the Texans who elected me over and over again, I believe free trade benefits America, that it increases jobs, it benefits farmers, it benefits ranchers, it benefits manufacturers, and when we open up foreign markets, I can tell you the state of Texas, there are some three million jobs that depend on international trade, that we see in a very real sense the benefits of trade. We're in, in a time of economic stagnation where we've got right now under Barack Obama the lowest labor force participation since 1978. We need jobs and growth, and history has demonstrated that without fast track, it is proven practically impossible for any president, Democrat or Republican, to negotiate a free trade agreement. The reason being that foreign nations don't negotiate with the president if Congress on the back end can add a bunch of amendments after they've negotiated an agreement. So what Fast Track provides is that if a trade agreement is negotiated, it comes up and Congress just votes off of that. That has been, for 80 years, the only way free trade agreements have been able to be passed. TPA is six-year legislation. Now, a lot of people have said, the question you just asked, why on earth would you vote to give Barack Obama any more power? And why would you trust Barack Obama? Now let me be clear. I don't trust Barack Obama at all. But Obama is going to be in office for just 19 more months. Trade promotion authority was six year legislation. If we want the next president, who I hope is a Republican, and frankly, who I hope is me, have fast track authority, the only chance to get it was now, because the Democrats would vote on a straight party line vote to prevent any Republican from having Now let's talk about TPP, because a lot of people are concerned about TPP. One of the most maddening aspects of TPP is that the text is secret, it's classified. Let me be clear, I think that is stupid. Now, I've read TPP. Members of Congress are allowed to read it. I've gone and read it. Frankly, on reading now, it's like six, seven hundred pages. I'm not going to represent to you that I've studied every paragraph closely. I have read it. And on reading it, it was a relatively straightforward trade agreement. It at least appeared to be, although I did not have weeks to study. Unfortunately, I think the administration's decision to keep the text secret Given the abuse of power from this administration, only encourages people to say, what horrible things must be in there if they're hiding the text? Now, let me give you two bits of good news. One, under Trade Promotion Authority, no agreement can be voted on, including TPP, until the text has been public for 60 days which means everyone will get the opportunity to read for two months the text of TPP, to look at it, and if there's some provision buried in paragraph number 5032 that I missed on a quick read, in 60 days people will have time to study it and assess is this beneficial or not. 
But I think, and I'm publicly called, I think the Obama administration should make the text of TPP public right now. Final question, and I'm going to open it up to the floor. Your Republican opponents in the primary, their line of attack so far, and I assume it's going to be in the future, is Ted Cruz is eloquent, Ted Cruz is articulate, Ted Cruz stood up against Obamacare. That's a terrible thing for them to say about it. <laughs> There's one thing Ted Cruz lacks, and Governor, former Governor Rick Perry has said it. He wasn't a governor. He has no executive experience. He's essentially a freshman senator. We had a freshman senator in the White House under Obama. We need somebody with concrete executive governing experience. Ted Cruz's time is not now, it's in the future. What do you say to that argument? Very glad to have the chance to address that argument. You know, it, it's interesting. I'm always amused when, when the media treats it somehow as newsworthy when governors say they think governors would make a better president. <laughs> and I will say, for all of us with some historical memory, we remember the argument of governor versus senator has been somewhat historically convenient. So, in 1980, when the strong conservative candidate was Ronald Reagan, a governor, not a single voice from Washington went on television and said, we need a governor. Then we needed a former congressman by the name of George Herbert Walker Bush. Fast forward to 1996, when the modern establishment choice was Bob Hall. Not a single voice from Washington went on TV and said, we need a governor. Then we need an elder statesman from the Senate. Fast forward to 2008, when that choice was John McCain. None of those voices said, we need a governor. <laughs> then we need yet another senator. This election cycle, the primary moderate establishment candidates in the field are governors. And suddenly every pundit on Fox News every hour says, we need a governor. <laughs> Roughly an equal number of presidents have been senators and governors. Truth of the matter is, there have been good presidents and bad presidents who were both. Jimmy Carter was a governor. He was a train wreck. <laughs>
More than a few candidates, including some of those governors, when the fight in Indiana was happening, suddenly chose that time to rearrange their soccer. <laughs> if you say you support the Second Amendment, fantastic. Where were you in the fight when Barack Obama was trying to push his unconstitutional gun control law? If you say you support privacy, fabulous. Where were you in fighting to end the Obama administration's illegal bulk collection of phone metadata? If you say you support the Tenth Amendment, terrific. Where were you leading the fight to stop Common Core and have you embraced Common Core just a few months ago? If you say you support life in marriage, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you support Israel, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you oppose radical Islamic terrorism, when have you stood up and fought? If you say you oppose Iran getting nuclear weapons, when have you stood up and fought?